It's been a while since I did some proper wild camping, so I decided to come back to the Big Sur coast for a little overnight adventure. This time I'm taking a dirt road to a higher elevation up in the Santa Lucia Mountains to an area called Pruitt Ridge, where the views, scenery, and camp spots are supposed to be absolutely amazing. So it took me about 20-30 minutes to get up over here off of the main road and uh, I spent about another hour just driving around looking at camping spots and there are quite a bit of options here. You definitely need a four-wheel drive I gotta say and preferably one with a little bit of ground clearance otherwise you'll bottom out in some areas. Oh I saw a bobcat that was very very cool. I was driving. I noticed something moving in the woods. I looked over, so I grabbed my phone, started filming. It's not the best footage, it's a little shaky. It was looking at me, then it finally turned around. I think it just got afraid, and I noticed this little tail, and it wasn't very big at all. I mean, it was the size of a house cat. I've seen mountain lions, um, not around here, but I've seen mountain lions around where I live, which is about two hours south of here. So it doesn't surprise me that uh, yeah, there are bobcats and uh, lynxes, that sort of thing. Anyway, it is getting dark. I'm going to hurry up and pitch my tent. There is a storm that's moving through. I'm not quite sure how strong it's going to be. I'm hoping it's not too bad. And it didn't look too bad looking at the Doppler radar because these roads, if you get strong winds and you get a lot of rain, you'll get landslides, You'll get trees that come down, block the road. There are people that have gotten stuck up here for days until they could clear the road. So, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, it could get a little bit um, dicey up here. Yeah. Anyway, all right. So I'm gonna start pitching my tent here. So I brought the optional cross poles, but I don't think they're going to be needed tonight. Uh, the winds are not supposed to be too strong. One of the reasons why I came up over here tonight is uh, if you saw my last video, I was struggling with this tent. I seam sealed it. I didn't do a very good job. So I'm hoping that uh, this time around it's all dialed in. If we get a little bit of rain tonight, I'm going to be able to tell whether I've uh, succeeded or not. <laughs> you now there are these little pockets right here and they are, they can be a little finicky. Whoa. One thing that I've changed with the tent is that I I just made these guy lines a little bit longer. Uh, the ones that come with the tent are pretty short like this and I just thought, eh, you know, why not just make them a little bit longer because I think it will probably give it a little bit more stability. Just in case the wind does pick up a little bit, I am going to use the main arch pole guy lines. Of 
course, it's got to be this last steak ah, that is going to give me a hard time. Shoot. And I hate using my shoes to put the steak in because if you apply too much pressure, you can always run it right through the sole of your shoe. <laughs> hmm. If I could find something to beat it in the ground with. No. Come on. All right. There's a bit of a cloud inversion going on over here. I'm not really quite sure of the altitude. I will post it right up here. I think the word that I would use to describe this is atmospheric. It's just so gorgeous. The clouds moving in. I'm guessing it'll get pretty foggy over here in a little bit. Have a look at this fog. It is pretty thick. Gosh, I can't really see more than maybe 30, 40 feet tops ahead of me. Yeah. Feels pretty spooky. All right, so I'm almost all set up over here. Let me show you what I'm sporting tonight. So I've got the Katabata Gear Flex 30 quilt. That'll keep me warm till right around freezing, but I don't expect it to get that cold tonight. I think it's supposed to dip down to like, oh, the high 30s, but that's about it. Then I've got the trusty Thermarest x light and this time I've brought two pillows. I've got the medium-sized Cedar Summit and the large one. Uh, my neck's been bothering me lately, so hopefully that's gonna help with that. Okay, let's get some food going. I am getting hungry. Before we get cooking, I'm gonna throw on my puffy. I'm not moving as much, and the temperature is dropping. Start raining here right around now, and uh, just in case, I'll throw on my rain jacket. Also, I had no business being on eBay, but I picked this pot up made by Trangia. Honestly, it reminds me of the lunch boxes from Squid Games. But yeah, it'll be interesting cooking on this thing. It's very lightweight, and it was extremely cheap. I had a sale on it, it was like 12 bucks. I couldn't turn it down, so yeah. Um, speaking of food, uh, let's see, I picked up this stuff from REI. I've never seen this brand before, from Nomad Nutrition. Anyway, Hungarian goulash and Ukrainian borscht. Hmm, it's all plant-based. So yeah, pretty excited about this, and I'm also excited about 
Ooh, yes, just some plain old and simple Guinness right here. Haven't had stout in a while, so definitely looking forward to this. Instead of preparing it right in the bag, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna toss it in this pot over here. Okay, let's see. I'm using this Snow Peak bipod stove. I've been enjoying this thing quite a bit. I like it. It's pretty uh, pretty stable, and it's also pretty strong too. Let's see. It's somewhat level, level enough. All right, so we're gonna start off with the Hungarian goulash. How many cups of water do I need? I need a minimum of one and a quarter. Good deal, yeah. Okay, that's roughly one. Eh, one and a half, can't hurt it. Stuff is looking good. I'm just gonna crack open the stuff. Uh oh. oh. Whoa. Good thing I wasn't in my sleeping bag when I opened this thing. Knock it over, it's gonna come right towards the tent. Oh, yes. Cheers, everybody. All right. Started raining over here, so I better I better hurry up. Hot, hot, hot. It's pretty good. Just a little bit spicy, but very tasty. Like the rain is getting a little bit stronger now. Now, uh, that warmed me up. Uh, I'm just gonna enjoy my Guinness before hitting the sack. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna have that other, uh, that other dehydrated meal, the Ukrainian borscht. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. I love borscht. But um, yeah, I'm gonna save this one for later. Yeah, that Hungarian one actually filled me up pretty nicely. Uh, cheers again, folks. Oh, oh yeah, 
Ah, this is very nice. Very, very relaxing. Hopefully, it's gonna either keep raining like this. No, it sounds like it's slowing down, but anyway, or hopefully it'll intensify, and that way it'll give me a good idea whether I succeeded in my seam sealing endeavor. But like I said in my previous video, if you all caught that one, if you end up getting a tent from Tarp Tent, then yeah, pay them the $35 to get it seam sealed. It is totally worth it. <laughs> I'm not really sure why they, they offer it as an option. I, I don't know. Uh, but if any of you have the answer, let me know down below. I'd be curious to know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to finish my ale and settle in for the evening. I am pretty tired. So unless something exciting uh, happens, maybe it starts raining, wind picks up or what have you, I will bring you back. If not, then I'll see you in the morning. I woke up to a cold, foggy, and windy morning. It was a bit gusty, but the winds weren't too bad, blowing at around 12 miles an hour. It rained on and off all night. I checked the tent for leaks, and I was happy to find out that no water got in, meaning that my seam ceiling was finally a success. Before packing up, I brewed up some tea for the trip back. Earl Grey to be exact, my favorite kind. Folks, as you can see, I've left absolutely no trace. I'm all packed up and ready to go. Alrighty, alrighty. If you enjoyed the video, please give it the good old thumbs up and consider subscribing. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down button twice and you'll be all set. I'll see you next adventure, my friends. Cheers. Thank you.